I'm Matthew Brichette, and this is Behind the Wings. And oh, by the way, do not start this engine. So if you tuned into our last episode, you'll remember that we talked about the F100 Super Sabre. Well, I'm actually sitting here on an F86 regular Sabre. The F86 was actually designed utilizing captured German data. We actually captured a ton of data that the Germans had put together for their jet aircraft, and we actually captured a lot of German scientists and brought them to the US under Operation Paperclip. The F-86 is one of those planes that actually was designed utilizing some of that information. In fact, it's the first swept-wing jet fighter aircraft that the U.S. ever flew. Anyway, we're going to do a kind of a walk around of this plane, and we're going to learn some other cool things that hopefully you guys didn't know. Come on, let's go check it out. So we were just talking about how the F-86 was designed using captured German data. Now part of that data resulted, bam, in this. This is an automatic slat. This thing literally just is held into position by the wind flowing over it when you're flying. As you go slower, the thing falls out. As you go faster, it gets pushed back in and it comes from the Messerschmitt 262 jet fighter that all uber nerds know about. So here we are designing our own aircraft, yet we're swiping stuff from the, the, the country that we just beat in World War II. I love this kind of stuff. This is how innovation works. Let's go see some other stuff. <laughs> okay. What am I hiding behind? Well, this is an air brake, and they were hydraulically actuated, so you would pop them, and out they flew. And what that would do is, if you're screaming down the runway at 400 and some odd miles an hour, you only got your brakes. Unlike the F-100, which had a parachute and a hook, the F-86 only had its brakes in this to slow it down on the runway. And you could even use them in a dogfight if you really needed to make some funky maneuvers. But enough with the outside. Let's go check out the front office. Here we are in the cockpit of the F-86. Now ours is an H model, which means that it was built too late to actually fly during the Korean War. Now, the earlier models that did fly during the Korean War were awesome. They actually came away with a 10 to 1 kill ratio. That is really impressive. These guys were really maneuverable and pretty fast for their day. In fact, they were so maneuverable that during the Vietnam War, when our F-105s were just getting chewed up by North Vietnamese MiG-17s, we started a program called Feather Duster. And so these guys filled in for MiG-17s going against F-105 thuds. And what it allowed the pilot of the thud to do was to figure out how to evade or shoot down a MiG-17 they might encounter over North Vietnam. Now, I talked about how the H model is a little bit different from some of the earlier models. Let's go see what that means. Oh, that is cool. Now, one of the things you'll notice about the H model is that it's got two guns on this side, two guns on the other, whereas earlier F-86s had six, three, and three, and those were 50 caliber machine guns. This bad boy is a 20 millimeter cannon. That packs quite a wallop. Now, the other thing that makes the F-86H a little bit different from its cousins is the fact that it's equipped with the LABS system. And if you've seen our other episode on the F-100, you'll remember that LABS means Low Altitude Bombing System. Basically, LABS was nothing more than a way for you to get out of the area before the nuke went boom. But you know what? Let's take a look at the paint scheme on this guy. Hey, Mr. Cameraman, you in there? Let's get a wide angle view of this bad boy. We got stuff to talk about. Thank you for the wide shot. So take a look at this bad boy. This is painted up as the 52nd fighter wing. 
Now, why did we paint it like that? Well, it was actually pretty simple because it actually flew with the 52nd fighter wing. And if you know anything about the 52nd fighter wing, you know at one time Francis Gabby Gabreski actually commanded that unit. And if you're an uber geek like me, you also know that Gabby Gabreski flew P-47s in World War II and scored 28 kills before he was shot down and made a POW. That is a real hero. So I got a question for you guys. I think that North American may have taken some of their design cues from Falkwolf's TA-183 jet aircraft. Tell us what you guys think, if you know what that plane is. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate all of you coming back every month to watch our videos. They are a ton of fun to make. So stay with us because you never know what we're gonna do next month. Oh yeah, baby, that's gonna be cool. Anyway, we'll talk at you later. See ya.